Djibouti is a country that many people are still unaware of, maybe some of us don't even know where it is on the map, but it is assumed to be one of the most strategic points of the world in the future, and for this reason, superpowers are competing for a corner. So much so that China opened the first overseas military base in its history in this country. Not only China, but also the United States, France, Japan, and Italy are all vying for a foothold here. But why are they doing this? Why is Djibouti so important and what kind of country is it? Let's take a closer look. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button if you like the video. Djibouti is a country in the so-called Horn of Africa, bordering Eritrea to the north, Ethiopia to the southwest, Somalia to the south, the Gulf of Aden to the east, and the Babul Mendep Strait to the northeast. It is the smallest country on the African continent after Gambia and Eswatini, formerly Swaziland. Two ethnic groups make up the country with just under 1 million inhabitants. 70% of the population is Somali and 30% Afar. Afars are people living in the Danakil Desert in this region and spread to Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Djibouti. Somalis migrated from the Arabian Peninsula and settled here about 1,000 years ago. Today, the government of the country is divided between these two ethnic communities by the constitution. The president is elected from Somalis and the prime minister from Afars. Both peoples follow the Sunni Muslim faith. There are still local beliefs in some small tribes in the country. In total, 94% of Djibouti is Sunni Muslim. Arabic and French are the official languages, but local languages are also spoken. The capital is Djibouti City. 76% of the population lives in the capital. Due to its strategic importance, the number of foreign missions is quite large. Foreign soldiers and diplomats make up 6% of the population. Djibouti, along with the Horn of Africa, came under Ottoman rule when Egypt came under Ottoman rule. The Horn of Africa was an Ottoman province from 1577 to 1867. The construction and subsequent opening of the Suez Canal changed the fate of the region. The opening of the Suez Canal and the weakening of the Ottoman Empire led the French to set their sights on the region. As a result of the colonial movements that started in 1859, the region was completely under French control in 1883. Its name was changed to French Somaliland. The French first used it as a supply base for their ships en route to their colonies in Southeast Asia. Coal stations built on the coast of Djibouti provided fuel for their ships. Although Egypt gained its independence in 1922, the Suez Canal was owned by a company controlled by Western countries and the Egyptian government had no say over it. Gamal Abdel Nasser, who came to power in 1952, wanted to nationalize the canal, which led to the war known as the Suez Crisis in 1956. Israel, the United Kingdom, and France together launched a military operation against Egypt. During these operations, Djibouti provided all the bases for the French army and allowed the French navy to control the Baboul Mendep Strait. In the course of time, France was among the Western countries that wanted to appear more democratic and liberal in the face of the Soviet Union. The French allowed the Djiboutians to hold referendums on independence twice, in 1958 and 1967. While allowing the referendum, they provoked the people in the country against each other and they got what they wanted from both referendums, the Djiboutians said no to independence. The third referendum in 1977 was more fair than the others and Djibouti won its independence. Despite independence, France has never withdrawn its troops from Djibouti and has the largest military bases outside its borders in Djibouti. Djibouti's geographical strategic importance emerged with the opening of the Suez Canal and the crisis in 1956. This importance has gradually increased over time. The Babul Mendep Strait, the gateway to the Red Sea, is one of the key places in the world. Approximately 35,000 commercial ships pass through the strait annually. Nearly 30% of the world's oil exports pass through here. The trade volume is over $2 trillion a year. The Persian Gulf is the place where most oil is loaded in the world. Ships taking oil cargo from Basra have to pass through this strait to take their cargo to European countries. Especially after the Russian sanctions, the strategic importance of the Babul Mendep Strait will increase even more. Djibouti is the most dominant country in this strait. On the other hand, Djibouti ports are also important for its neighbor Ethiopia. Ethiopia, which is landlocked, is one of the largest economies in Africa and they use Djibouti as a port because it is safer than Eritrea and Somalia and because of the railway. Djibouti is also right next to the Arabian Peninsula, which is rich in underground resources, but also problematic. Despite being so close, it also has a natural geographical border of protection from them. 
Countries with military bases in Djibouti can easily organize operations in the Arabian Peninsula. It provides a unique location in a problematic geography, especially for drones or unmanned aerial vehicles, which are becoming increasingly important in today's defense technologies. The importance of Djibouti for the United States emerged after the September 11, 2001 attacks. After the attacks, the U.S. needed bases in the Middle East and North Africa for its declared war on terror. They officially opened the Camp Lemigny base in the capital Djibouti city in 2003. The base is the only official U.S. base in Africa. It is used as a command center. There are 4,000 personnel. These include special forces, intelligence units, and air force squadrons. Under Obama, it was announced that the Camp Lemigny base would become a permanent American presence in the region and that $1.4 billion would be spent on modernizing the facility. The Americans are currently actively using Camp Lemigny for drone operations in the conflicts in Yemen and Somalia. The event that turned all eyes on Djibouti was the opening of China's first cross-border military base in its history. In recent years, China has been trying to increase its economic and political influence in most African countries. Most of the major investments in these countries have been made almost exclusively with Chinese loans. Of course, while investing so much in the continent, they would not be left behind Djibouti, where the United States is located and which has a very high strategic importance. They did not only open a military base in Djibouti for their biggest competitors, the United States, and their investments in Africa. China's trade with the European Union countries is worth over $1 billion a day. A significant part of this trade passes through the Babul Mendep Strait. They also import 40% of their oil through the Indian Ocean. For both their trade and oil imports, it was inevitable that they needed a military base in the most dominant location in the region. There was no better option for this. Countries pay rent to the Djiboutian government for the military bases. Income from military bases accounts for 10% of the country's budget. The economic value created by each foreign soldier is more than the economic value created by 100 Djiboutians. Apart from other countries, China also provides economic aid to Djibouti. Chinese banks financed $14.4 billion of the country's infrastructure investments. In addition, most of the country's foreign debt was also assumed by Chinese banks. In addition to all these, the Chinese are also working to establish the world's largest free trade zone in Djibouti. The Djiboutian government has announced a program called Vision 2035 and they have been working on it for about 10 years. Their goal is to become a strategic location for foreign military bases as well as a world-class business and logistics center like Singapore and Dubai. For this they have created a state fund of $1.5 billion. This is the most logical thing they can do to develop. Even though I explain how important and strategic it is for foreign countries, its people are very, very poor. They have no underground resources. Only 1% of the land is suitable for agriculture. Most of the country consists of deserts and rocky areas. The water shortage is very big. They have no permanent rivers that flow regularly. They are generally under the influence of desert climate. For this reason, the streets are almost empty at noon, shops are closed and life starts again after 4 p.m. Rainfall is also very low and irregular. It usually comes in the form of severe storms that cause flooding and then temporary rivers. Access to electricity is also limited. Education levels are low. The health system is inadequate. Malaria, diarrhea, and febrile diseases are common due to malnutrition and water shortages. Tourism is another sector that Djibouti attaches importance to in order to increase economic development in the country. They are building new tourist facilities. Their region is one of the best places in the world for underwater riches. As in neighboring countries, Djiboutians also consume a lot of the herb called Yemen herb. The substance called cot in the local language is a plant leaf. It has natural chemical stimulants. It causes addiction and psychosis in people. Despite being a poor country, it is one of the most expensive countries in Africa. The fact that all products are imported causes the prices to be high. Market prices are above the world average. A 15-minute taxi ride can cost about $35. Although the quality of hotel services is low, room rates are about $100 per night. I mentioned the water shortage earlier. All of the permanent water sources in Djibouti are salt lakes. The most prominent of these is Lake Assel. Located 156 meters below sea level, the lake is the lowest point of the African continent and one of the places where the Earth's crust is the thinnest. With a salt content of 35%, Lake Assel is the second saltiest lake in the world after Lake Don Juan in Antarctica. 
Around the lake are large salt formations that are still being worked. The Djiboutian government has also partnered with foreigners to build a salt processing center here.